everyone, welcome, my name is Cassie and today I am joined with a very special guest. Who the hell are you and why am I talking to you? <laughs> um, thank you. A uh, very <laughs> special guest. I'll take it. Um, yeah, so my name is George Murphy, I'm a voice actor and I'm also the writer of Heartache. Yes, Heartache, which is coming out at the end of this month and we're all very, very excited for it, aren't we? No, it's, it's, it's been, it feels like it's been a long time coming. It's been a really long for, time. For, for many reasons, considering it's... it's so it's many reasons that we are going to get... Yeah. yeah. Um, cool. So, George, as the writer, um, what is Heartache about, would you say? So, Heartache, I've always described as like a twisted love story. Because I, I think love is something we associate as a very positive and a very beautiful thing. But it's also a motivating factor for some pretty horrific deeds. So people can, you know, say love can cause you to do crazy things. And I think that goes both to positive and negative extremes. And this story just so happens to explore the negative side of that. How did you come up with, with this idea? Where, where did it come from? So... Essentially, the uh, where did it come from? It came from sort of like in terms of like its initial inception. Do you mean like the the, the initial inception of the whole thing, or yeah. like the idea for the story itself? Uh, or what what was what was your journey to? Oh, I've got this idea. To I need to write this. So essentially, I mean, the the story itself is essentially just it's about a woman who wakes up in a place she doesn't recognize, a man she doesn't know. Um, and for reasons, obviously, you'll discover throughout the play. Um, this person's sort of keeping her there against her will, but he isn't harming her, touching her, and just almost wants to make her seem comfortable. Um, so the sort of original concept of this story, uh, is essentially, it started for university, like to sort of answer your initial question. Um, we had to put on a play for our final year performance. And I at university, and I already primarily done comedy performances at university. I just enjoyed making people laugh and it just made me feel good. And it helped, I think, because like, if I knew the performance was going well, because like, you get that instant reaction of you tell a, a joke or a punchline, people laugh, you're just like, okay, this is good. Instead of that sort of worrying fear you have when you're being marked on a performance where you're almost overthinking about, is this doing well, is it not? So I think all those things combined, I always enjoy doing more kind of lighthearted and comedic sort of performances. And so I knew my class for the end of year performance we were to do, we had to write and perform our own play and, and everything like that. I knew people would be expecting something similar. So I kind of wanted to not only subvert expectations, I guess, but I also wanted to just kind of just challenge myself and then do something very drastically different from what I'd usually done. Because so I, I just... Just branching off of that slightly, because you had done um, solo performance when, for our first module, we had to do 10 minutes of just us on stage, and you did something that was actually really rather dark that was based on, like, the Joker or something. Like, it, um, no, a Joker yes. comic, wasn't it? No, no, it was, it was it was something to do with... It was exploring the idea of um, just sanity and, like, yes. the sort of concept of how people view people that aren't you know, seen as sane. And like, the, I think the definition of sanity is someone who has like sound mental health. And then as I sort of pointed out on that, I think, you know, how many people do you really know that actually have sound mental health? So by definition, oh. are they insane? And <laughs> yeah, I kind of bookended university, I guess, with my first major performance being quite dark. And then it was a very lighthearted and then it ended. But of course, pre that, we'd <laughs> seen you doing the bloody witches with Ryan. <laughs> yeah, there was some like, some pantomime, like, made up some song and dances, a lot of improv, just just a lot of weird stuff. As you do at university, you just kind of do whatever, throw, throw anything at the wall and see what sticks. But yeah, I, I just, I knew that people were expecting, they'd gotten used to seeing those kind of performances and people was, it, it was nice because people would come up to me saying like, oh, we're really looking forward to, you know, having a laugh with you all. And so I just kind of was just like, the more I heard that, the more I was just like, I'm gonna do something different now. So I kind of, deliberately just told people as i mentioned earlier like oh it's, one, it's just a love story that's it and so then the idea when it was going to be a stage play originally i just liked the idea of everyone expecting this light-hearted love story comedic kind of thing and it opens to just a woman on stage in a room she doesn't recognize 
and the audience doesn't recognize what's going on or anything. It's, it's just your mind starts to fill in the blanks and the sort of imagination starts to run a bit wild. And from there, it takes us to many different sort of twists and turns. And yeah, so I guess that was sort of the main reason where it kind of came from. So I, I think also like with the pairing that we had, because we were together on this, it was just us and people saw like you as like the comedy person and me who could like sort of do like witty one-liners but was very much the serious person so they would not have put us yeah. together when i wrote the piece originally i didn't really i don't really think of casting very early on when i write something because oh yeah no. I don't even know how, how often with writing i don't even know if something i write is even going to make it to, to theater like the actual stage so but yeah i had just seen it was a performance of posh which yes. is when I was just like, there we go. Like that's that's what I cast. Yeah, um, I, I think you. I think you used the phrase. I know how far I can push you. Yeah, well, I, I knew it was it was going to get like quite a, a quite a dark and kind of heavy subject yeah. matter. So I knew it was going to be have to be someone who I could sort of trust and who you know was willing to just see where this could go and sort of push this story to where where the places it needed to go and you know the story evolved a bit along the way and certain scenes were added and certain ones cut but i i think it just i had a a very small list of people in mind and it, it very lucky that you happen to be uh present mm -hmm. after lockdown affected everything because yeah we'll get on to that one <laughs> we'll get to that um yeah yeah no absolutely because i i think we had a fairly good dynamic um with that but anyway so you've got your idea you've got the sort of project in mind you know like vaguely what you want to happen so where do yeah. you go from there like and this is for heartache but also just generally what what's um how do you like writing how, what is your process what's my process what um, is your process or is it still being worked out <laughs> no i'd say I could say it's unorthodox. That's the Excellent. first one that, that comes to mind, if that makes sense. Um, I don't know. I just kind of, I, I just have so many different ideas that would just come to my head randomly and I just kind of throw them on the page. And I just have like, I have notebooks full of just different ideas and then things that I'll then just kind of try to connect the dots from there, really. And so when I was realizing I was going to write something a bit more serious, I knew... For this project in particular, I wanted to set it in one room um, for two reasons. One was I really like stories like um, In Spectacles or Dangerous Corner by J.B. Priestley, where it's a bunch of characters all in one room, because I think there's something deeply personal about that. I think when you're, tr you're trapped with the characters in this isolated environment, you're in this confined space and and so the dialogue has to be so rich and, and so heavy because you can't rely on the physical aspect of it you can't rely on a bunch of action happening on stage because you're in this one room like there's only so much you can do in it in this a single room so it, it falls to the dialogue it falls to the characters which i was think the most interesting part of okay. any story are, are the characters so that was one reason why i wanted to sit in one place the other was because convenience because set design at university was very limited so i was just like if i have to keep messing around with the set that's just gonna be a headache so i was like just one room i can set it simple that's fine so when i knew that for this project the writing process um became a, a lot easier because i just knew like okay i can set you know i, I have the dialogue going for as long as it needs to and then when one character leaves the room we can end a scene and things like that. Like just it kind of was coming naturally, but essentially for this project, a bunch of ideas just came out of nowhere when I had the idea and a bunch of specific scenes. And I, it was kind of just weaving that thread to make it all into a relatively coherent story. Um, and I think apart from that, it's just the only other thing is the characters is the thing I probably work on the most in the sense of, I just, I don't know. I think if you, if you don't have interesting characters or characters that I at least like or care about one way or the other I find it harder to connect with the overall story because I just think it's I'd much rather have a simple story with complex characters than a really complicated story with shallow characters that's just me so we've got the idea 
you have now actually written the play and we're rehearsing it like we're making a few tweaks to the lines but we're rehearsing it and then ding dong here's the pandemic at your door <laughs> um yeah that was an interesting <laughs> that was an interesting time um yeah i think the biggest like we had i had to change so much of the play because i've been writing it it was like nine months i think i've been working on it on and off from, because from like i like knew october like late september early october to this would have been march it was it was a it while six, mu six it was, months it was it was it felt like it while. felt like a long time <laughs> yeah so i i i knew quite like I had this concept, obviously, and we have been rehearsing it for a while. I had so much that was so visual because it was a stage play. I hadn't even considered it. So when we had to change it due to COVID and all, all that fun stuff, um, we were initially actually told, and if you remember, to submit everything in like a written format of what we would have wanted to do. Yeah, and so both like, of us went, no, nah, that. <laughs> well, yeah, it basically was, I, I kind of said very quickly on, I, I didn't want to do that because I yeah. wanted it to be a performance. And mm. at the time I was, I just, I, I was listening to the, to a radio play. It's called, it's called Wolverine the Long Night. I had Richard Armitage in it. And it was really good. It was really engrossing. I was listening to that. And the moment they said you need to adapt it, I just instantly thought, okay, how could I adapt it? Like, oh. and that was the first thing that came to mind just because I had to be listening to that project at the time. And then it just came to figuring out how to do that. So I knew that was the plan instantly, and I was very lucky oh, yeah. that the I, the space I was living at, I had the people, I had the equipment. My lovely girlfriend edited it all together and helped the sound. Out to share, Sarah, really absolutely brilliant. Blaster, always, um, and so she she was uh, immense help. And I just I think it was very lucky we happened to have a, a microphone, we happened to have the editing mm. equipment. And I just remember thinking. I don't want to look back in a year's time and think I let all this get on top of me. I let all of this overwhelm me and I just, you know, settled for a, a mediocre final thing that I submitted. I said, thought I wanted to just see how I would deal with something so difficult and what I would do about it. So I just kind of had that mindset of I'm still going to make this work. Mm. And looking back, we did. And it was, we it did, was, absolutely. It was really good. And it was, it was yeah. yeah, very lucky, but the, the biggest change to the script, though, mm -hmm. I added a whole other storyline with the present day. There was a whole new character that was put in with, with the police officer and then Jane being interviewed. Because um, the reason for this was I simply needed a way to have the characters narrate what was happening, basically, uh, just, just telling the audience what I couldn't relay through just sound. Because previously it was so visual I now needed to realize how to translate this to an auditory kind of perspective. So I thought if I had scenes where we had Jane being interviewed, that that could help set a scene as well, break up the scenes with her and John and then these other sort of ones. So it just, it lends itself very well to it. And I was very glad I figured that out because I wouldn't have really known how to do it unless I added those kind of storylines in. And I think the thing I really like about the radio play version and why those scenes work so well and then the, the scenes in the in the sort of with John, the fact that now it's completely sound based, like what I said earlier about, you know, what scares you might not scare me. Like it's when you read a book, and your own visual interpretation gets projected onto things like characters and places. If someone describes a, a, a room in a book, they can be as descriptive as they want, descriptive as they want, but I will still have a different image in my head of that room than you will, no matter how much detail they go into because you're, that's just people interpret things different ways. So suddenly with a, a plot that was this, you know, open-ended and had these different sort of messages and, and themes and uh, it was very uh, much about your own point of view on everything. It suddenly, it lended itself really well. And I think it, it worked a lot better than it would have if it was on stage. I mean, I do, I do think it could be adapted to stage very easily as it was originally intended. Mm -hmm. But the fact that this is, as I mentioned, a complete auditory experience so much is in regards to your own imagination. I, I think it lends itself very well, and, and everything just would look vastly different from my perspective than your perspective. And 
you, you you know then that all falls down to everything like the editing like you can play sounds that you know are just ambient sounds and the audience is wondering like are those specific sounds that are meant to be there are they not like you can tell so much about a character usually from their facial expressions or body language and now you have to rely on your tone of voice or just how they're breathing or just all these different things that usually you can't which to, to one degree sounds limiting in how much you can sort of write and perform but to the other degree i, I think it's it's like this mountain of interpretation and exploration from like an acting standpoint it's just it's, it's all a bit over the place like they were so different in terms of how you could perform how you could create them but i think it actually lends itself really well and i definitely think this is the yeah best way it could have been interpreted but yeah it's, it's one of those things i remember us talking about it because my memory of like coming up with the I, th I think because I think we had a similar like thought about turning it into a radio play because we were living with each other at the time so it just seemed like an obvious solution but I remember us sat in a circle like listening to our lecturer Steve talking about our different options and he mentioned radio play and we were sat at the opposite ends of the circle just our eyes met <laughs> we were like that is what we're doing it's like yeah, yeah that, that one, that one, that's the one we're doing. It was instant, it was just like, yeah, I gotta, yeah. gotta do that. Yeah. I think, yeah, I think it, it did work. And again, like, I, yeah. I hope, I hope that's all, that all comes across uh, yeah, in the radio play. But most of that luckily falls down to the, the editor. Um, and, and so luckily most of that is not on me. So if none of it comes across, I can with confidence say it's not my fault. <laughs> so that's good. Yeah, you, you can just go, hey, not my problem. Yeah. Um, well, the editor or the director, so yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, it's mine and Carl's problem, it's great. Um, <laughs> but no, like, because I, I absolutely agree. I think it, like, whilst I enjoyed doing it when it was a stage play, I think it does lend itself so incredibly well to a radio play as well. Like, because I've got... Um, I do have the two scripts, still. Oh, the, um, the original play. Yeah, I've got the original because way back when I was starting Everything's Rosie and I was trying to look for plays, one of the yeah. things that I had in my head, I don't know if you remember this, but I said, oh, I might want to do Heartache. Yeah. But I wanted, might want to do it as the stage play. So I've got both of them. And so, like, reading both of them, like, obviously, like, the stage play was good, but I think it just added something to make it into radio. I, I think if I were to tune it back to a stage play, I would definitely rewrite a lot of aspects of it because I think yeah. our first draft of the script, I think the radio play just added a lot of layers that yeah. I think I would then need to put back into the original script. But yeah, I I, I don't know. I just, I think it's a, it was a lot of, it was, it was a lot of fun with the recording as well. And there was a lot yeah. of things that made it very different, especially in a, a proper studio, which was very different yes. from on a floor but no i, I think <laughs> sat on a floor is... with a yeah. table and a cat in the background <laughs> yes like thankfully she didn't meow much but yeah no it's so. a bloody pigeon you've kind of touched on it a little bit but so how does it feel taking this thing that you were like no i'm gonna do something with it still like i'm gonna finish uni on a high i'm still gonna do this yeah. to take it from that to then be recording it in a proper studio how did that feel yeah, I mean, I mean, I love, I always love recording in the studio. Like, I, I love the experience of just going there and just doing that as an experience. And since university, I've, I've been fortunate enough to be able to do that a few times. And I mean, last time, like I said, we were, we were in a uni house. We were sat on the floor with a microphone in a lounge, just trying to figure it out and trying to make it work. I think we did record it over like two days and it took ages because we couldn't even do our lines together. And we just like do one at a time, fill in the blanks and... Yeah, a proper studio is more fun because you've got all the sort of tools there to play with. You can actually interact with like your fellow actors, which helps with chemistry, and then just you get a better performance. And I, yeah, I've, I've had a lot of, I, I've had a lot more experience with voice work since university, as, as I mentioned, and since when we first did it to now. And so, in regards to sort of that whole experience, I don't know. I felt like you could just play. At least I felt like I could play with the lines so much more because. I don't know. I like the fact that as like a voice actor in a proper studio, it's fun to know every little thing you do is picked up, every little inflection on your voice, and it just gives you so much room to play and and just explore the sort of script. And as an actor, I think it's a lot of fun. And I think with this, 
uh, you know, this this play has a lot of range in what you get to do. You know, there are times where you get to be very subtle. There are times where you get to be very loud. And it was just in a studio doing something that I'd written so long ago that I never really thought would be, you know, ever just seen the light of day again. It was sort of a really nice thing to be like, oh, this is, you know, this is this is fun. This is cool. And just things get to get into do it. And it was, it was also fun seeing the, the other people who hadn't known anything about it previously discussing aspects of the story and their interpretation of things. And I was just like, it was so weird because I, I love discussing like um, storylines in, in characters. And like when I see a film with my friends, I'll always be discussing it loads after and, and rambling on detail. So it was, it was really weird and kind of surreal to hear, have those kind of conversations and hear people having these conversations about something I'd, I had written. So I, I was I was very glad to be able to come back to it, really, and hopefully this is the definitive version of the, of the play, so we'll see. Mm-hmm. And is there the possibility of maybe writing more radio plays for you, or is this it? Or... No, I, I'm writing one currently, actually. Um, Brilliant. I'm, I'm writing... <laughs> I, yeah, I'm, I'm writing a thing which may, we'll see what happens with it. It'll either be late this year or early, you know, to mid 2024. Um, it's, it's the project's title for now is just Shattered. Um, and it's essentially about a group of friends um, and one of them goes missing and they're all brought in and questioned about the disappearance because it's, you know, they were the last person to see their friend before they disappeared. Uh, and one by one, each character is examined and it kind of devolves into this sort of almost like murder mystery where everyone's secrets are slowly kind of brought on display and, and laid out in front of them. We kind of see the darker, more personal sides of each person and the things of what they want to keep hidden and I know these sort of ugly sides of everyone and everything's sort of put under the microscope and it, it's, it's interesting because it's, it's it's not only is about you know who did what and why it's also about everyone in this group seeing the sort of true version of the uh, the the other side of all these people around them and the sides that everyone wants to keep hidden and whether or not they can recover from it or something a bit more sinister is going on and yeah it's in the very early stages now i'm just working on the script still currently um but it will possibly be released by the end of the year or early 2024, but That's we'll really see. Cool. That's uh, really cool. And, yeah, let me know when that happens so I can share it here, there, and everywhere. <laughs> Thank you, yes. I will, I will keep you posted. But, really? yes, really I should really probably cool. write something lighthearted to balance the yeah, scales. Yeah, like, it's, it's a little bit like... Um, <laughs> like, you, you said just to bookend it completely. You started yeah. saying... I wanted to get away from comedy, so I did a really serious thing, and now that's all you're doing. I, I mean, uh, serious, you know, that's, I wouldn't even say heartache's that dark, you know, it's... Would you not? Well, I would say it's, I would say it's dark, I'd just say it's... There are it's, moments. It's, it's, I don't it know, it's, 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 it's a bit nice. messed up. It's been messed up in places, yes. you know. I don't know, it's like I said, love can do, you know, maybe we do extreme things, and I want these things to be on display, so... I can't really, can't really, you know, tell that story without showing what I'm on about. So, yeah, I'll just I'll write something nice and happy to, to balance the scales next time. There you yeah, go. in the same way that I'll eventually get round to doing a comedy. <laughs> yeah, there you go. All works out. Comes full circle for everyone. There Brilliant. You know. Well, thank you very, very much for your time, George. It yeah, has been absolutely lovely talking to you. Yes, likewise. Uh, heartache will be released on the everything's rosy website at the end of this month so keep your eye out for that and see you soon